there is another semantic element, or really it's a collection of semantic elements that you need to know about because you're going to be using them all the time, or you should be using them all the time. In fact, if you're a developer, you've been around the block for a while, I'm going to challenge you. You should be using these things more than you probably are. It's the block quote, the site element, and the inline quote. Let's go ahead and talk about it. I want you to open Etch. I want you to pull up the page that we have been working on. And just because I wanna work at the top of the canvas for this training, I don't wanna be stuck here at the bottom of the canvas. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a UX tweak, okay? Little uh, quality of life feature, if you will. I'm gonna zoom in on the uh, structure panel and you're gonna see the hero section that we've done and the pricing section that we've constructed so far. I just wanna hide those for a minute, okay? That's gonna give me a nice blank canvas to focus on what I'm working on, the new thing that I'm working on and this lesson in particular, and then I can bring those things back at any time. That does not affect front-end visibility, so I can even save the page and that is gonna have no effect on what users see when they're coming to the website. It's just an improvement for the developer experience. All right, so what I'm gonna do is add a section element right here, and we are gonna call this testimonials or we can call it reviews or whatever you want to do. Let's let's call it reviews. You know, tends to be shorter is a little bit better. Shorter is in general better. Okay, so we're going to do reviews and we're going to talk about block quotes, inline quotes and the site tag. Again, very very common need for these things, but they're not used as much as they should be used. And I'm gonna teach you about them and I'm gonna encourage you to use them a lot, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a basic block quote, the most basic possible block quote. It is not difficult, very, very easy to do. So I can obviously write code down here if I wanna write the code. I could use Emmet if I wanna write with Emmet, or I can just add a div inside of my container, and I'm gonna call this my block quote for right now. And the only thing I have to do to change it to a block quote, guys, guess what it is? Double click the tag, write the word block quote. You've done it, congratulations. You have mastered the, well, there's a couple other rules we have to talk about, but you're on your way to mastering the block quote just like that. Now we need some text inside, typically in a paragraph element. So we're gonna click here and we can just leave that as text for right now. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna generate some lorem ipsum. There's our quote right there, my friends. Now you're gonna notice that it is styled. Like where did that styling come from? Did the browser style it? No, browsers will try to auto style block quotes and it is very, very ugly. And that's actually one of the like annoyances of using a block quote kind of is that you, you use it and suddenly the browser's trying to add these ugly styles and you have to stop what you're doing and you have to do all of the styling for your block quote and we, we want to style the block quotes. That's one of the like good things about it. It is a specifically defined semantic element that we can easily apply default styles to. Now, in this case, automatic CSS is handling my block quote styling. If you are on the latest version of ACSS and you go to additional styling and you go to block quotes, you're gonna see all of the properties you can control for block quotes, for the text of block quotes, for the footer and caption, for the site tag. You have some options related to block quotes, okay? So this is just automatic CSS, again, live, lending a helping hand where I wanted to use a block quote in this situation. And instead of giving me an ugly browser style block quote, it gave me a pre-styled block quote that I have full control over. And that I have like, I, I don't have to, it's just very easy, right? I can open the panel, I can come in and go, how much spacing? do I want in my block quote? Just cycling through my available tokens, for example. Maybe I wanna change that uh, primary border color to black. Maybe I wanna drop the border radius off of my block quotes. I can just fill out some fields, see what's happening in real time, hit save, move on with my life. But even then, like at least it looks good by default. And if I don't wanna spend time on the styling right now, I can just skip it do the rest of my work, hit publish. It's gonna look fine, right? I can come back later and I can add the styling. Not a big deal whatsoever. Like this is the value of automatic CSS. Once again, like one of thousands of little things where it's like, yeah, just handle that for me. Just just pick up the, the slack, do the heavy lifting, right? I'm just focusing on my work, streamlining my workflow. 
But this is a basic, basic, basic block quote. Um, and you would see these all the time in things like uh, blog posts, right? So here we have like an example where you have the title of the blog post. This one happens to start with a nice block quote, and then it goes into the content. You might see a pull quote left or right, right? Those are just differently styled block quotes. And so here's the thing, right? That's not the only use case. That's the obvious use case, like a publication style thing but actually block quotes should be used far more often. And we're gonna talk about the concept of creating a review card, a review card, because that is a quote from a buyer, a customer, a user, or whatever, that should use the block quote as well. The entire card should kind of be structured as a block quote. Now let's talk about the citation and the attribution that are attached to the block quote. Do you have to have a citation? No. Do you have to have attribution? No, you don't. The, the block quote I showed you, block quote with paragraph inside of it, that is valid. That is the simplest possible iteration of a block quote. You can absolutely do it like that. If you have to apply attribution, I would highly recommend putting this in a figure tag with a figure structure, okay? And I'm gonna show you exactly why. So I'm gonna wrap this in a div and I'm gonna change this to my figure and my figure. Now, I changed the label and the semantic tag. So I now have a block quote inside of a figure. Why are we using figure? Well, remember one of the things I told you about figures is if the thing needs a caption, it should probably be in a figure. Well, guess what? This block quote needs a caption. It needs a caption for the purposes of attribution and citation. So what I'm gonna do is in my figure right here, I am going to click the div and add another div, and this is going to be my caption. And I change the tag to fig caption. It is the caption for the figure. And this gives me an attribution line. It should be noted, attribution and citation are not the same thing, okay? So I would say that the, and, and I can come in here with um, uh, just text. Remember, you can't type directly on the canvas if there isn't already text there. So like the minute I just throw one character in there, I can actually type in there. And so I would say Kevin Geary. So this is very, very important. Kevin Geary is who I'm attributing the quote to, or we could say Steve Jobs. That's who I'm attributing the quote to. That is not the citation. So what I'm gonna do in order to create a citation is inside this caption, I am going to add either a div or a span or it just some kind of block. It doesn't matter because we're gonna hijack that block and we are going to change it to cite. And you see what happens when I change it to cite, it immediately goes in line. Citation is an in line element. It is not a block level element. And I could say something like Apple, uh, actually I'll, I'll say like, um, let's just say Apple newsletter, okay? So this is a quote from Steve Jobs in the Apple newsletter. And so what we have here is we have, this will be the citation, right? Uh, the citation, is a semantic element used for the purposes of attribution. That's why this is confusing. A lot of people use these things wrong because you are attributing something, but you're attributing it to an article. You're attributing it to a source, right? A publication, not the actual person who said the quote. It is the where they said it. Where can the quote be found, right? Okay, so we have the Apple newsletter, that's the publication. We have Steve Jobs, which is just text inside of a caption that we are using the caption for global or overall attribution of this quote. But notice what we have in terms of a figure here. We literally just built a review card, okay? And so I can literally call this review card. And it is a figure with a block quote inside of it. That is the text of the person's review. And then we have a caption for the purposes of attributing it to them. And then if they, let's say the quote was left on Google or on Yelp or on um, any other review, plot, trust pilot, whatever. This is where you would cite, okay? So this becomes like, yes, we did semantics, but in this case, semantics actually created the structure that we're gonna need for styling this block quote as the end result. 
So semantic and structure went perfectly hand in hand here to create the exact structure that we need for our review card. Now you're probably asking, well, what Kevin, what happens if it's a list of reviews? Doesn't that have to be put in a semantic list? Absolutely. So you can right click here. You can say convert to list and guess what? It's going to convert that to a list L I and there is your review card figure inside of the list item. So there is nothing stopping you if you have a list of cards from having this be a semantic list, but the figure is the outer wrapper of the review card. You're gonna have your block quote all in there with a uh, semantic value, your caption in there with semantic value, your citation in there with semantic value. This is the best way to structure a testimonial card, a review card, a quote card of some kind that needs to be built in like a modular fashion, right? Or as we're gonna talk about in module number five, S5, which is the systems approach to web development. Okay, before we get out of here, let's talk quickly about an inline quote. I'm gonna add another container here and I'm just going to add a bunch of text and we'll do something like lorem <clears throat> 15, okay? And I wanna take part of this here, okay? And um, let's just make it an inline quote, like like uh, Steve said, comma, and then we need this to be the actual quote that Steve said. Here is the wrong approach. Here is the way that most people do it. Here is the way that you want to avoid doing it. They go quote, and they go quote. Okay, not fantastic. Not fan. That is not how you should be doing things, okay? So I'm gonna take that away. Now watch this magic. This is the line, okay, right here. I am going to do the trick that I showed you in a previous lesson, which is I copy the line that I need. I command exit, that copies it to my clipboard and gets rid of it at the same time. And then I put the tag in that I need and then I just hit command V and I paste it right back in. Now this is an inline quote element. What we're doing here is we're creating a box where there wasn't a box previously. And it's a special kind of box. It, 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 it has some advantages for us, okay? So let's zoom out and, well, would you look at that? It's got curly quotes and it auto-placed the quotes for me. And there's one more feature that a lot of people don't realize here, that this automatically supports translation. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna give you uh, another little trick here. I can come in here and I can declare a language on any of these boxes that I've created. And I'm gonna say FR for French. Now I'm gonna zoom out and would you look at that? When you use an inline quote, the actual quote marks are part of the translation of how browsers understand language. So I had curly quotes there when my language was English, but now when I change it to France, I have whatever the fuck these things are called in France, okay? But you see, like what value here, right? Um, so should I be putting quotes in manually? No, no, no. Like semantically, a screen reader now is going to, a couple, couple advantages here. Screen readers are going to announce this as an inline quote so that we automatically know that it's a, we're quoting somebody if we're a screen reader user. Not to mention, this is translatable, not to mention this created a styling box. We now have an element we can target for the purposes of styling it differently from the surrounding text. So instead of like using manual quotes and putting this in a span so you can style it, why would you do that? When you can just use an inline quote tag, the inline quote tag creates a stylable box, but the inline quote tag already also automatically creates your quotes and translates your quotes for you. Is <laughs> Like, why, why wouldn't we do it this way? Very few people actually do it this way, but this is how it should be done. This is why I said, I'm gonna elevate you above 95% of the people using page builders, much less just, just developers. Why don't we just change that? Why don't you, you'll be, you'll know more than 95% of, of like website builders, website developers, when you get to the end of PB 101. Okay, so that is an inline quote. Again, we could style this with a class. We could style just say, hey, on my website, I want all inline quotes to look like 
this, okay? When we get to selectors and styling, we'll talk about how to do global element styling versus actual like uh, like specific class ID, et cetera, styling. But this is block quotes. This is inline quotes. Start using these things as much as possible. Uh, your homework is to go build this review card. It's a figure with a block quote, a paragraph, a fig caption, text, and a citation. And then we will be building on this in the future. All right, drop a comment below, hit like, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and uh, make sure if you haven't downloaded your development copy of Etch yet, get that development copy, spin this up, do this stuff with me, alongside me as we work our way through this course. I'll see you in the next lesson.